just listening to the Bible reading and uh, the actually it was Mel Mulder beyond intelligent design on family radio and he mentioned how when the fall occurred in his opinion the way he reads scripture that God was giving Adam and Eve an opportunity to repent because God must judge as he said as Mel Mulder said all unconfessed sin so he was implying if not saying directly that they had a chance they had the opportunity if they just would have confessed it might have gone differently and i think that really misses the point and he carried it right up to now he, of course he of course he brought in first john 1 9 as our example we must confess all our sins which i maintain is utterly absurd and impossible no one can do such a thing it is along the same lines of what the serpent taught about learn about good and evil and be like God obviously God does not repent but to even assume that you could somehow manage all of your sin to the extent that you will either reduce it down to nothing or confess every single one of them when he came here and he said you know you have a bad thought you're a murderer you're gonna you're gonna confess all of that every single bad thought you know, because that doesn't just apply to murder and adultery. As he gave those as two examples. But everything, you have a bad thought about anything. You covet something. You sin. You know, wow, that's a nice car. <laughs> Seriously, folks. That's what that, I'm not trying to criticize Mel Mulder. He's, I, I love his teaching. I love listening to him. I just think that's a, there's a huge flaw in there because God said, and the day you eat thereof, you shall die. You shall surely die. And they, how do you undie? Because to be dead to your, to your eternal creator is to be eternally dead. How are you going to fix that? There is no way that's ever going to be fixed. Except by the eternal God himself. He said, you will die. And they did. They died in that moment, in that second. They didn't begin to die as so many of these theologies and I've played around with it in my myself with the oh a day is, is a thousand years a thousand years of the day and I toyed with that idea of hmm well he died but they all no one lived to be a thousand years so they died that day nah that's not it folks that's not it he said in that day just like he cr made everything in six days they died that day that was the day they died so when you are dead to your eternal God your eternal creator you are eternally dead. So there's no one who can repair that except that eternal God. I know I'm repeating myself, but I just want to emphasize that because we go about the business, and I use we loosely, but those who are of religion, which I used to be, and so I, I believe I see this clearly now, I, I no longer see things like I used to be, I used to as in, I can fix this, I can reconcile this, God's gonna help me fix this situation, oh yeah. I'm going to throw my filthy rags at this problem and, and his grace is going to make up the difference. As Sorry, folks, it's not in the Bible. It's absurd. It diminishes him as a savior, as a God. In any sense of that meaning, if it, if it means, a God really means what it means, which is he creates and I am created. There is no helping him in this process, especially when it comes to eternal life. It's all him. It's either all him or I'm part savior of myself. Because if, if he is helping me to maintain my salvation, then that means I'm helping him. And so therefore I am my own savior in that math, in that system. And which is, again, I say absurd. And I did believe it and it was wrong. And I'm just encouraging anyone out there, don't believe such nonsense. It is absurd. God was not giving them an opportunity to fix it to 1 John 1, 9 it, so to speak. It was in the plan. He wanted. He wants us to trust in him. He wants us to trust in him. And we didn't. We don't naturally do that. He's our savior. He's the one who does it. We don't. There was no opportunity for reconciliation there at that point. That was not how it was going to be because he wanted to save us because he knows he's the only one who can, for one thing. 
and he happens to be jealous for us, and he loves that. He loves saving us. He loves being the only one. It's just it doesn't really work when you think he's one of the ones, as in you and him. You need to discard that. That's not what's going on. You need a savior, 100% him, 0% you. There was no opportunity. They were dead, eternally to their God, only to be saved eternally by their God. And that's my thought, in Jesus' name, amen.